was with the way of life. So when you were talking earlier and mentioning Canada, I made you wait. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to After the Game. Today, as a special guest, we have Gerald Riggs. Those of you that are football fans remember the name Gerald Riggs. Gerald is, uh, is a Louisianan, uh, as I am, born there. Um, and from there, he went to Arizona State and from Arizona State um, into the Atlanta Falcons. And as you know, I'll tell you a little bit more about Gerald, but he still holds a, an amazing record with the uh, Atlanta Falcons as we speak. Now, Gerald, let me ask you one thing. One of the things that um, every fan out there is always asking, whatever happened to, uh, to Gerald Riggs or whatever happened to John Riggs mm -hmm. or whatever happened to um, uh, Steve Barkowski or uh, uh, Tommy Novers, mm -hmm. um, um, those guys, Ken Reeves, uh, I would like for you to tell us a little bit about what it was that uh, excited you and that motivated you to start to thinking about a career um, after the game when you were actually playing, mm -hmm. even, even from starting in college? Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not, it's not hard because uh, at some point in time, the game is going to end. Right. Uh, and I think a lot of the coaches that I played with, a lot of the, uh, the people who were more inspirational in my life would always tell me, you know, it, it's great to play this game, but you've got to start thinking down the road at some point in time to do something else. I, I'll tell you a short story real quick. As in when I went to college, for instance, uh, all the schools recruited me as a, as a football and basketball guy. The running back uh, coach uh, by the name of Don Baker at the time was at Arizona State. He took me out to play golf. Now, understand, I hated golf. <laughs> I, I couldn't stand golf. I was one of those guys that, well, I had a checkerboard pass with some of the golf players when I was in, in high school. I didn't like them. Uh -huh. But um, he took us out to play golf. Um, and a whole 18 holes of playing golf in the hot sun in Arizona, and I said, you know, this man here was just trying to try to keep a brother down, all right? He, I couldn't get the ball off the ground, never made a birdie. Never, I don't even think I, everything was a snowman probably. Yeah. But the, the moral of the whole thing was that I wanted you to see, uh, and this is him talking to me, I wanted you to see that, you know, that you have to, at some point in time, do something different in life. Don't think that you can only be pigeonholed into being one particular athlete. You're going to have to be able to be versatile. You're going to have to be able to be uh, a person that can can have uh, uh, foresight about to, to do something else, to maybe possibly even do uh, something outside of your chosen field. So don't close the door to it. Understand that life uh, throws you a lot of curves, and you've got to be ready to adjust to them. And, and that's what happened to me in my life. Even as football ended, uh, there were a lot of things that I wanted to do, never really um, wanted to pigeonhole myself into just doing one thing. So I, I, I ended up being somewhat of an ambassador of many missions. And, and through that, I've been successful in, in being able to do not one thing, but a couple of different things because I, I really feel it's been a blessing that the Lord has put things in my life to continue to keep me going along, to, to, to continue to keep getting better at different fields and different uh, endeavors in life. Well, you know, Gerald, it's interesting that you, you mentioned the Lord. A lot of us uh, look for our strength, and we think that we're really in charge mm -hmm. at certain points in time. Mm -hmm. But that coach uh, did something very important. And it goes back to when we started, all of us, uh, mm -hmm. a, as athletes, um, in high school, elementary school, uh, middle school, that it's extracurricular. Mm -hmm. That sports is something that you do while you are a student yeah. uh, in the game. And what we, so many times, what we forget to, to continue to think and, and to do is that once we get into a certain comfort level, uh, like football, uh, we want to stay there. And that become our only dream. Mm -hmm. And, and we all know that, that football and basketball and all the sports are interesting and they're things that we all aspire to be. But the chances of those kids in high school coming through the ranks, college, to become a professional football player is about one half of one percent in mm -hmm. the National Football League. Mm -hmm. So what, what we're trying to encourage to those high school kids out there is that you need to listen to your coaches, to your parents, um, and to those teachers that are telling you every day, be all you can be, not just a good athlete, and don't become just an athlete. Become a person that happened to be a good athlete. Right. That, that right. Those are the things that, that we try to talk about and try to stress early on, mm -hmm. that there is going to be life after sports. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, Gerald, I want to tell you this, too. You mentioned about golf, that when you went out there that uh, you weren't playing very well, but since that time you've become quite a golfer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to take it up. As a matter of fact, all the, the, there were four recruits that they wanted to get extremely bad at that time. And, and those four, they take, the, their coach had taken, all, taken us out to play golf. 
Well, all four of us came back basically because of the same reason, because we found out that there was something else that we were not good at. Mm -hmm. We knew that we could run faster than most everybody else, run real big running backs, and all that, but all four of us came back basically because of the same reason. And no other school had taken us out to do that. Yeah. No other school. So all four of us came back, and I, I promised that coach that I was going to play golf, and I was going <laughs> to, I was going to whoop his butt at some point in time. <laughs> well, and, and I got pretty good at it. So. You're very good, yeah. Gerald. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I, I, I'm, I look for every year that I look forward to you playing in our golf tournaments, our charity golf tournament mm -hmm. with the with the NFL alumni caring for kids program. Uh, these are the kinds of things that uh, that make a big difference. I always taught my daughters and my sons at early ages that you got to play this game called golf because what it does is teach you how to compete, how to compete against yourself and against that course. Mm -hmm. And if uh, being from Louisiana, um, uh, like you are, and, and a lot of great ones from Louisiana, from James Harris to Terry Bradshaw to um, the big cat, uh, uh, Ernie Ladd, um, who, who, has, uh, who has left us yes. at this point. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, Louisiana has produced probably more athletes than any state in the union. Now, I'm going to tell you, the last Super Bowl, Super Bowl 42, mm -hmm. I'm sitting there watching um, the two Manning boys are on the, um, one is on the field, one is up in the stand, right. both MVPs. Terry Bradshaw goes out on the field, MVP, and guess who's already down there? Doug Williams, mm -hmm. MVP. Mm -hmm. Four MVP, Super Bowl MVPs in the state of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana yeah. on, the t on, on the same two yeah. the same night. Isn't that something? That was wow. so proud. Wow. Um, so, you know, what I, what I want to try to stress to our audience and, and, and to the kids out there, especially the kids, and I mean young kids and old kids, I mean like from high school, uh, you, you can become a great high school player, uh, and for whatever reason you don't make it to college. You can become a great college player for so, some reason. You don't make it to the pros. Mm -hmm. uh, you can become a professional player and get wiped out by injury, uh, mm -hmm. competition, or whatever. But those are prep preparational type uh, uh, careers to get you ready for the real game, which right. is the game of life. Mm -hmm. uh, it teaches us uh, personality, character, etc. I remember uh, when I was in high school, mm -hmm. small school, we didn't have a choice. We had to play every sport. We only had like 300 kids in the entire school. It was double A in, in Louisiana. And we, if you played football, you ran track. Yeah. If you ran track, you played basketball. Uh, the only sport we didn't have was baseball because in those days we didn't have the uniform. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I've learned have stayed with me and with guys like yourself is that you got to have a work ethic. Mm -hmm. And that work ethic transcends itself from sports into, uh, into the rest of the world. Right. Uh, because I figure if you're an athlete, you can do anything if you become a good athlete mm -hmm. because mentally and physically you're challenged all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I go and talk to kids a lot, okay? I, mm -hmm. I, this is kind of one of those things where I, I guess I've had a, just a personal mission, you know, pretty much my whole career coming from the background that I had. Mm -hmm. And I can't speak for all sports. Right. Baseball, it's, it's a different animal. Basketball, it's a little bit different. Um, but football... When I sit and I, and I get a chance to talk to kids really about football and how it really transcends life so much. I mean, you're talking about a, a sport in which there are so many things that mirror life and how you need certain aspects of it to be successful mm -hmm. uh, from the family standpoint, from the God standpoint, from the ed educational standpoint. There are so many things that really just totally bring it all together. So you, the, the picture that you get is, is one in which when they hear me talk about it, you can see the lights go on. And I love to see that in a kid's eyes is when, you know, when you, especially kids who may have some, some early on difficulties Challenges. with just, yeah, yeah. just with, with understanding um, everything from the, 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 the chain of order, you know, who is in the charge or the discipline mm -hmm. factors or whatever. But when you, when you sit down and talk to them and you see the light come on, and right. you just see that kid like, you know, you, you'll touch on something. And certainly with my experiences, because, I, you know, I wasn't always a, a, a great student. I wasn't always a, a, a great kid, even in my own home. Right. But through persevering and through growing up and, and understanding certain things were, were happening for a reason, mm -hmm. coming around full circle to, to finally make it and <clears throat> going back and looking at some of the things that, that I went through, it's always a good story for kids because they want to hear that you have been through it. Most everybody thinks that, you know, education, people who are educated or whatever, mm -hmm. well, they, they had it easy. Right. Well, it wasn't easy. It, it was not easy, and, and it certainly uh, was uh, a 